Hey everyone, let's talk books I'm going to read in October. So in October, I am participating in two different readathons. The first one being the Gilmore Girls Readathon, which was created by Pastel Pages, Liv's Library, and Mackenzie Lane. Uh, of course, anything that I mention will be linked down below, so you can check out their announcement videos and all about this readathon. <laughs> The second one that I'm going to be participating in is the Boo to You readathon created by the Bookish Princess um, based on Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. So, first up is the Gilmore Girls readathon, and that one goes from October 1st through October 15th. And there are seven different challenges plus a group book, and you can also Instead of doing the challenges, pick some books off of the Rory Gilmore reading list and read some of those over the two weeks. I decided to do the challenges in the Gilmore Girls Readathon because that was easier for me. A lot of the books on Rory Gilmore reading list are pretty heavy um, and I wanted to get a ton of reading done in October. So the first challenge is a book with a school setting in honor of Chilton and Yale. I'm going to be reading Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire. This is the first book in the Wayward Children series and basically it's about these children who have big adventures or like go off to different places like Narnia or um, Neverland or you know just like have these magical adventures and then they come back and they have a hard time adjusting to real life so they get sent to this um, boarding school type of situation so I thought that sounded really interesting and it's a really short book which will help me to finish all of these in the time that I have. The second challenge is to read a book with a mother-daughter relationship in it uh, of course, that is because of Rory and Lorelai's relationship in Gilmore Girls. And for this, it, I had a hard time choosing for this because there are not a lot of books that have mother-daughter relationships, um, especially at the forefront. So I ended up going with Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I thought this would be good because Elizabeth and all of the sisters and the mom in this have a really interesting and fun relationship and um, it plays a fairly big role in the book. So I thought that would be fun and I'm always up for reading Jane Austen. So yeah, Pride and Prejudice for that one. The third prompt is to read a cozy book set during fall or winter that is in honor of Stars Hollow because it's obviously mostly fall and winter when we're talking about Gilmore Girls during the school year and it's just beautiful and cozy. So for this one, I decided to go with The Sparrow Sisters by Ellen Herrick. I don't really know much about this, but it seems to have like some witchy autumnal vibes. So obviously there are some fall leaves on the front. And um, it says the Sparrow Sisters are as tightly woven into the New England seaside town of Granite Point as the wild sweet peas that climb the stone walls along the harbor. Sorrel, Nettie, and Patience are as colorful as the beech plumes on the dunes and as mysterious as the fog that rolls into town at dusk. So there's like some kind of mystery that goes on. And uh, yeah, I don't know. There's some kind of mystery. It seems cozy and cute and very fall-ish, so I thought it would be good for this prompt. The fourth prompt is to read a book with a complicated love interest at it, and that is in honor of Rory, and of course her complicated love interests with Dean and Jess and Logan. Let me know what team you're on in the comments. You can see who I like the most in the description box. So check that out. I decided to read All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr and I don't know if this has a complicated love interest in it but it's about a girl whose family kind of gets run out of Paris I believe by the Nazis. Also this boy who gets put into like a 
Nazi training program basically and becomes a spy for Hitler and for the Nazis and their paths kind of converge so I assume that they are going to be falling in love but I don't actually know uh, and what's more complicated than a Nazi marrying someone who is very not Nazi during World War II so I thought that would be good and it sounds amazing and it's got like a ton of different awards so I'm excited to read it the fifth prompt is to read a book with Asian representation or by an Asian author, and that is because of Lane, who is Rory's best friend, and she is Korean. And so for this prompt, I chose Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake um, because I've been hearing so much about this series. Uh, the I believe it's the third one. The final book just came out, and... Uh, Everyone's been raving about it, so I thought I had to hop on this bandwagon and see if I enjoyed it as much as everyone else. Um, and Kendar Blake is South Korean, so it fits that challenge. If you don't know what this is about, basically it's about these three princesses who... Uh, their mother is the queen. She gives birth to triplets, I believe. And they get separated very early on and each of them goes to like a certain faction of the government and they each have different um, abilities or powers. And then they have to kill each other and the last girl standing becomes the queen. Uh, I believe is how it goes. So this sounds amazing. Um, yeah, I am really excited for that. The sixth prompt is to read the next book in a series that you haven't yet completed, and that is in honor of A Year in the Life, which was the continuation of the story. And for this, I've decided to read The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, which is the second in the Broken Earth trilogy. Um, I read the first one a couple of months ago, and my library just hasn't had the second one, so finally... When I saw this prompt, I was like, okay, I have to read that one. I have to get this done. So it's on hold at the library. But in case it doesn't come in, I do also have uh, Legendary by Stephanie Garber, which is the second in the Caraval series. Um, so yeah, one or the other one will be read. Yeah, hopefully the Obelisk Gate, but if it doesn't come in, then um, it'll be Legendary. So... Yeah, we'll see which one I get to finish for that, but I'm very excited to read either one. Then the last prompt is to read a book with food on the cover or food in the story, and that's in honor of Luke's Diner and also Suki, who is a chef. Um, for this, I decided to read Julie and Julia, uh, My Year of Cooking Dangerously by Julie Powell. Uh, if you haven't seen this movie, you should. It's really cute. I'm hoping that the book is just as cute. I love food and cooking and Julia Child is great. So um, I'm very excited for this one and it will fit perfectly for that prompt. Then I am also going to be reading, well, listening to the audiobook Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. And that's the group book for the Gilmore Girls Readathon. It's about her life and how she became an actress and how she got to be on Gilmore Girls and um, yeah, so I'm very excited. I've already started listening to it and it's really funny so far and really insightful. So yeah, excited for that one. So those are all the books that I'm reading for the Gilmore Girls readathon. Next up is the Boo to You readathon by The Bookish Princess, and um, this one is in honor of Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party over at Magic Kingdom. For this one, the prompts are a little bit different. Basically, you have different lands throughout the Magic Kingdom, and so each land I'm going to be choosing at least one book for. Um, for one of them, I have a couple. But yeah, so first one is Fantasyland, Adventureland, Tomorrowland. Frontierland and then also the Haunted Man Fantasyland. I have a couple of options. Both of them ironically are 
um, connected to Peter Pan because I just read Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. It's one of my favorite books of all time and I'm just feeling on a Peter Pan kick. So the first one is called Never Ever and I didn't write down the author. It's on my phone which I'm filming on um, but I will put it somewhere so that you can see who the author is. And this is a book about a girl who meets a real life Peter Pan and he kind of whisks her off and t they like party and have fun together but then something is just not quite right and it sounds like it's going to be kind of like a mystery thriller a little bit with um, Peter Pan themes so I'm very excited for that one. I think it'll be cute and interesting. The second book that I have for Fantasyland is The Little White Bird by J.M. Barry. And if you didn't know, which I did not know until just recently, this is the first book that J.M. Barry wrote with Peter Pan in it. So it's called The Little White Bird. I don't know anything about it except that it has Peter Pan in it and that's good enough for me. So I'm very excited. Uh, so I'm going into this blind, but when I found out that there was another book with Peter Pan in it, I bought it straight away. I had to have it. It's really short, super, super thin, um, with pretty big writing, so I don't think it'll take me long to read. And if you haven't guessed already, I love Peter Pan to death. So yeah, very excited for that. Next up is Adventureland, and for this I chose Heart of Darkness and other stories um, by Joseph Conrad. And um, first of all, just look at this cover. Like, if that doesn't scream Adventureland, I don't know what does with all the palm fronds and we've got the little boat here, which reminds me of the Jungle Cruise. I bought this book, well, my mom bought me this book, thank you mom, um, when we were at Barnes and Noble in Arizona on uh, our road trip. And it was only like $10 and it's absolutely beautiful. It's like a leather bound book, but it's not, not a hardcover. It's like soft leather. Uh, I have no idea what this is about. This was a purely, very purely uh, cover buy because this cover is absolutely beautiful. And on the back, the only thing that it says is the horror, the horror. Um, so I just think it sounds, uh, hopefully good. I have no idea what it's about. I have a feeling they'll be on a boat in the middle of the jungle and something's going to go wrong. So yeah, I figured let's give it a try and it's perfect for Adventureland. Next up is Tomorrowland and for this land I'm going to be reading The City in the Middle of the Night by Charlie Jane Anders and this book is about this other planet where there are zones that are always daylight, always night and um, it doesn't, like it doesn't turn, it doesn't go from day to night and in one day um, you just have this part of the planet is day all the time, this part of the planet is night all the time, a sci-fi and kind of dystopian feel it seems like. There are like these cities and it's dangerous to go outside the cities. So that's really all I know about it. It sounds interesting. It sounded perfect for Tomorrowland. And yeah, we're going to go into it and hopefully it'll be good. Next up we have Frontierland and this is kind of like the western area of Magic Kingdom and for this I'm going to be reading An Easy Death by Charlene Harris. Um, this book, well first of all like the cover just screams Frontierland. There's literally a cowgirl on the front. So, this book, I don't know at all what it's about. I got it because the color, the cover was like perfect Frontierland cover and it sounds like a thriller and a little bit, um, I don't know, like creepy. There's a little bit of magic. There's um, just lots of things happening. So 
we'll see. I don't know how it's gonna be, but it wasn't very long. It fit the prompt. I thought it would be fun to just try something new, and yeah, that's my Frontierland pick. Then last but definitely not least is the Haunted Mansion, and for this I chose City of Ghosts because uh, Haunted Mansion is a mansion of ghosts, so why not a city of ghosts? And this is by Victoria Schwab, or V.E. Schwab. This book, from what I know about it, which is very little, is about a girl, and she can see ghosts, and her parents are like ghost hunters, so they will go to all these different historical sites, and, um hunt for ghosts and she can actually see them so anyways that's all I know <laughs> that is all I know but I think it'll be good I've heard good things about it and yeah again it's kind of a shorter book so hopefully I can get through all of them and I just thought it sounded perfect for the Haunted Mansion all right guys that does it for all the books that I'm going to be reading in October I sincerely hope I can get through all of them and yeah I'm excited to see how they all are. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments if you're participating in either of these readathons and what you're going to be reading for them, and I'll see you guys next time.